Uh, this talk is going to talk about ARC64 and Apache Top, so which is a journey we br bring uh, big data solutions on, on ARM. And I'll talk about Big Top and wha what Big Top is, some modules we have, new features we develop, developed recently. And then I'll hand over to June, uh, who, who has done some great contributions to Big Top community. And Probably we'll do a small demo and to show you how to run big data, data components on ARM. Uh, I'm Elvis Ye. Uh, I'm a member of Apache Software Foundation. So basically we do is uh, spread Apache way. So it's a way to build community, open source community. And we do mentorship. I'm also an Apache Big Top PNC member, committer, former VP. So for Big Top, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you later. I'm also a director of Taiwan Data Engineering Association. Uh, what we do is to promote open source software uh, in Taiwan uh, and some big data related stuff, data engineering things. Okay, so what is Apache Big Top? Uh, basically, you can think, think of it just a, a, pa a package solution for a Hadoop ecosystem and produce RPA and Debian packages. Uh, we are purely open source Hadoop distribution and you can also think of Apache Big Top as an open source community which choose to adopt the Apache way. Uh, we right now support 25 Hadoop ecosystem components and including many of the large ones such as Spark, Kafka, HBase, things like that. And uh, Big Top was founded uh, two, 2012 and now we have gone done a great job like uh, to support all the commercial Hadoop distribution. So you can, as you can see, that most of the biggest uh, Hadoop vendor or cloud vendor, they, they, they adopt, they leverage BigTop in certain different ways. Uh, so, so why we built BigTop uh, at the very beginning? So it's, it's, the answer is very simple, right? because we need to offer a Hadoop distribution which is uh, compatible to each other. So say we have multiple solu uh, components in, in a Hadoop distribu distribution, and we need to make sure that each of them is compatible. That's the, the problem we want to solve. And we can uh, dive a deep, deeper, a bit deeper into what BigTop just offered. Uh, we, we, the, the, the whole big top, uh, the, all of the big top modules can be categorized into these four categories. So packaging, containerization, deployment, and testing. Uh, combining these four, we, we offer a total solution for you to build a, all, uh, your own big data stack. Uh, first one is big top tool chain. So this is a set of puppy recipes to install all the required libraries and build tools. So say that you want to build Hadoop, and then you need to have protobuf on your build environment. And if you want to build the native libraries, you need to have CMake. So these, these recipes will, will, will define all the requirement solutions for, for the stack. For example, for, for, for big type stack required. And you, you just need to, uh, if you want to have a big top build environment, then you can just follow this simple recipe to prepare an environment. You just, you just need to clone our repo, and you get into it, and you, you make the environment, uh, uh, you, you, you install Puppy on the environment, and then you run our tool chain. So the, 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 the only requirement for this is uh, Java, which is because we, we are using Gradle. And if you want to do porting, like porting on ARM, so uh, I think most of the things you need to deal with is, is this tool chain, because it, those are dependency things you need to handle on. And right now, most of the features we provided are all containerized. And it's easy to, to think that this is the best solution we, 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 we can adopt. Uh, if, so, uh, combined to the previous uh, tool, which is ToolChain, we, we can just install whole, the, all the uh, build environment and commit them as, a, as, the Im as Docker images. So you can just consume this image and, and use them to build your packages. Uh, we, we got several advantages. So the first one is the build environment is immutable. So you
environment messed up. And if you want to do porting, it's very friendly. Uh, you just need to prepare those, uh, let's say, ARM64 images, and you try to build on them. If you uh, hit some issue, you, you fix the compatibility issue. Uh, I will say this is easy, but I, th I think Junhei will argue on that. <laughs> so he will talk about uh, his, his, pro his journey later. Okay, next one, uh, big top package. So this is the core things we offer, right? We offer this framework for you to build Hadoop ecosystem components into RPM or, RPM or Debian packages. We, we have two ways to build, build the packages. One is to build from release topple. Uh, so release topple is uh, of, often uh, a release issued by those Apache software, software community. And, and the other way to build is to build from git branch or commit hash. So the, uh, we, offer, we mostly will choose release table to do big tops uh, release because this is the most stable one. And if, you, if a de developer want to test on the uh, bleeding edge feature, they, they can choose to go for the build, go to build from the uh, branch or commit. So uh, to, to build a package, it's very easy. You just uh, issue this command to uh, you run Gradle wrapper and have to PKG. Uh, this, is, this requires the build environment to be ready. So that's why uh, we need to have a tool chain. So if you have a build environment ready, you can just use, use this command to, to build the package. Uh, we al our framework allowed you to patch on the fly. So this is very important, uh, and we made it very easy. You just need to place a git diff file in, in, in on a, a proper uh, place in our framework. So why we need to patch? Because uh, most of the components, uh, let's say Spark, if it, it releases a new version, it may not compatible to uh, every uh, components we, we choose to ad adopt. So let's say Spark is de has dependency to with Hive, Uzi, and Zeppelin. And maybe it's compatible to two of them, but, but not the rest of the one. So uh, we need to do the patch on our own. But, but we'll later uh, up upstream the patch to the upstream community. Okay, so next one is, next, uh, is Big Cup Puppet and Test. Uh, Puppet is a very uh, simple one. We, we, we have uh, our own set of recipes to do Hadoop de ecosystem deployment. So uh, if we want to test uh, the functionality, you need to get a cluster up and running, right? So that's the purpose of doing BigTop Puppet. And another uh, important core feature of BigTop is BigTop test. And we have uh, several uh, things provided here. So the first one is BigTop. Uh, test framework is a uh, utilities for you to write your own test in Java or Groovy. Uh, next one is because small test. Uh, we have a bunch of built-in tests, uh, built-in small tests for you to quickly diagnose the problem when you do an integration. Uh, next one, uh, big top integration test. So this one is more focused on the broader broader coverage. So. Uh, if you want to do a release, you probably want to run through all the integration tests. But if you are just doing a developer day-to-day -day development, uh, you 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 you, sh you need to have a smoke test to back your your back. Okay, package test is a test set to 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 find bugs before the package get to de to deploy. All right, so uh, this is uh, another tool we provided, which is called Big Top Provisioner. And you can see, you can see as a higher level abstraction of Big Top's various tool. So basically, it, what it does is it, it provides an uh, integrated solution to do deployment tests uh, for, for Big Top stack. Uh, so it would, what it does is to uh, provision and resource for you, which is Docker, and it, it will run Docker Puppet. Uh, it will run Big Cloud Puppet, and you will run the Big Cloud test. So uh, this, since this is a handy tool, we can just leverage it and uh, quickly set up our CI matrix. So this is our, our smoke test CI. 
and we we, we, we we use it to 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 discover any uh, development issue when we uh, bump in like uh, versions we do we, 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 we use this to discover if the, the, the version is not compatible to each other. Uh, BigCup Sandbox is also another feature and in a different, uh, focus on a different angle. So as you can see on the, on the right hand side, uh, basically what it does is to, is to pr take a provision of big data stack and commit it as an image. So you can just take this image and consume it. So what it does is, what it can do is it, it offers a quick start environment. So if you want to test, uh, you, can, you want to I I experience how big data works, you can ju just use this sandbox and run the workloads on it. And if you, you would like to do Hadoop applications uh, integration test, you can also leverage this sandbox images. And how to use it? It's very simple. You just uh, run this command. You you use our pre-built pre image, and then you can use Docker logs to see whether the provision is finished. Typically, it will take uh, around one minute to two minutes to for provisioning, and and then you can issue your big data workload. So f you can see this example. We are running a uh, a uh, pi calculation on Spark. So, so let's bring that sandbox. And this one is the new feature we just developed recently, and it's it's a it's a it's called Big Data Integration Test Framework 2.0. It's a full it provides full support to build and test packages uh, inside Docker with uh, with one stop seamlessly integrated entry at the Gradle wrapper. So we can just show you some examples. So for example, you, you, you would like to build packages. You can just use this command, Gradle wrapper, spark pkg in D. So what it does is uh, you will just leverage the, the image I just said that we, we have committed the image on Docker Hub, which is uh, already a big top build environment. And you will leverage that and try to build pack Spark inside that, that build environment. So you can just run this command on your Mac or any other, uh, other system that, that you, are, you are using for development. You don't need to prepare a separate build environment. And for this, uh, for this re repo in D, which is to uh, generate YAM or APT, APT uh, repository, for you to consume later on. So this is for package, and for deployment and test, you can use uh, this Gradle wrapper, doc, Docker provisioner command, with several properties specified. So for example, this enable local repos property will tell the provisioner to take the, the, the APT or YAM repo you just created and deploy uh, using that re repository. Uh, so the property stack is very simple, right? You just specify which big data stack you would like to deploy. And then you will specify smoke test uh, to tell the system which test you would like to run. So with this uh, new feature, you can just uh, uh, run the whole life cycle from build to deploy to test in one, st one stop. That Let's see the, 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 the line. You can see that we, we just use Gradle wrapper, Spark, PKG in D, repo in D, Docker provisioner. And, and then it, you, you'll get all the things done. But, uh, but for sure, this might take a while, but it's, it's very easy for you to leverage uh, the tool for, for your development. Uh, we are going to release uh, Bing Cloud 1.4 recently, uh, the, the timeline is upcoming at early April 2019, which is probably a few, few days later. Uh, we, we got some version bumps, uh, and uh, they have five distros supported, and five, three architectures supported, including ARM. Uh, we got some new features. Uh, integration test frameworks 2.0 is introduced. Uh, we got small text CI matrix go online. 
So right now, the quality of our release is even uh, better. Uh, we got more built-in test coverage, and we have uh, over, uh, over 100 juras resolved in this release. So uh, if you are interested in uh, contribute or get more ARM um, features uh, on ARM um, big data, uh, you, can, you can come and enjoy contributing in our community. So with that, uh, I'll hand over to Jun to talk about ARM-related um, contribution he has done. Welcome, Jun. Thank you, Evans. Okay, so a brief introduction for myself. Um, I'm uh, a committer and a uh, member of PMC of Apache Big Talk community, and I'm sure you, all of you have got some uh, under basic understanding of what uh, this Big Talk is. And I also I lead the enterprise workload team in um, open source software group. Uh, this team uh, focuses on uh, data science and storage stacks uh, enablement and optimization on ARM servers. And also we focus to contribute to build a diverse e software ecosystem. So that's about me. Um, for the Apache Bigtop on ARM support, it started very early in 2016. At that time, uh, we had the first uh, build environment uh, which support ARM uh, at that time. And later, we have a first try by using Ubuntu 14 distro as a basic distro to test uh, some basic function, uh, components like Hadoop or uh, Spark. That's uh, happened in 2017. And uh, after that, a lot of contributions for uh, ARM, for, for the components with uh, ARM64 related patch have been contributed uh, contribute to the community. And uh, by the time when uh, version 1.2.1 released, a lot of uh, ARC64 release patches have been merged by upstream. And uh, basically, uh, I would say that at that time, perhaps uh, uh, 15 or perhaps more than 15 components have been enabled and tested on ARM servers. So later, thanks to Ninaro's kind help, we have uh, uh, several ARC64 servers added to uh, big top uh, CI metrics, and uh, for that, uh, thank you Nero, very much. And, and that helps us a lot to uh, validate the patches from different uh, uh, contributors. And actually, the whole testing and verification for the big top on ARM servers. And uh, one moment, uh, that great moment uh, happened in last year, in November, uh, with uh, ver version 1.3.0 uh, released, ARM server support is officially added to big top support metrics. That sounds uh, a lot of people's contribution efforts. And during the whole progress to enable big top on ARM uh, platforms, we have learned a lot of things. The first and the most important thing is about dependency issues, because um, uh, even for most of the big data components are developing by using Java, but they still use a lot of native libraries, either as uh, uh, binaries or still as some kind of native binaries uh, embedded in the jars, which in, in the Maven repos. So that really caused a two uh, a lot of a headache for us, like uh, for the protocol buffer. Uh, it's uh, till today, it uh, hasn't provided any ARM uh, pre-built binaries for version 2.5.0. That's a really problem for us. As, and uh, this is uh, uh, commonly used a lot of uh, big data components, and uh, we call it as a holy version, and we cannot even change that. So we have to build it. We have to build this product, bu product buffer on ARM servers when we build the big top, uh, when we big build the um, big data stack on ARM servers. Yeah. And the, and we also find another things like the native binaries embedded in Java, like a level DB GNI, Ignite Shell Memory, JFI, Snap Java, and lots of things like that. That's also a problem. And the other thing is, uh, 
might could be uh, some kind of common problem for the uh, whole ecosystem, like a version mismatch. Some components use this version of log4j, and some uh, and other components use uh, another version of log4j, or maybe even log4j2. That cause problem to match these different requirements for the whole uh, software stack. And uh, also, there are cyclic reference uh, problems take a lot of effort to fix, just like just like the version mismatch. And uh, the last but not the least the, is that the tests are very important for software stacks. Yeah, because uh, if you want to do some really something with good software quality, you must improve your uh, test cases and uh, your test methodology to cover more uh, to cover more uh, properties or features you would like to present. So tests are very important for uh, for a mature and a high quality software release. So that's the three point things we have learned so far. So where is the big data heading? Um, actually, at present, the big data is getting some uh, kind of mature and uh, the developer is getting uh, flat. But so we can see there are more and more big data tools and, it, and the integrations on the cloud. And that means a lot of money goes to the cloud vendor's pocket, which means also means that there's still some uh, space for the uh, big data for the big data uh, software stack to uh, expand and developing. And we also see that the container world is uh, uh, in the container has into every uh, single field, and that always means that. Uh, Kubernetes now is taking up the whole industry, including not uh, in the uh, cloud provider, but also including the big data. So we see a lot of use cases like uh, HDFS on Kubernetes, Spark on Kubernetes, Flink on Kubernetes, and uh, others more. So Kubernetes uh, can be look like uh, can be a uh, one single compute, uh, computing platforms for OLTP, OLAP, or machine learning like that. And uh, now, as I just mentioned, that big data are getting mature. So a lot of uh, components have, have uh, skipped from the can-do to uh, can-do phase to perform well phase. And now the requirement for the users are easy to use these components. So that means uh, for these big data components, you must provide uh, more user-friendly APIs or uh, or UIs to make make the end uh, end users or end users or developers can use your component very easily and uh, uh, very clearly. So and uh, there are uh, more focus on components that get latest community attention based on the whole industry de development. We can see that Beam is getting very hot, and Arrow and Drill are receiving more and more attention. And right now, and we also uh, uh, different feedbacks, uh, different feedback on the Ambari uh, from the uh, university to the industry uh, uh, to the industry partners. They require uh, Ambari to support the big big uh, software stack. So we also see a lot of focus on on this. So for the future of Big Top. Uh, we are going to narrow down our focus to uh, those components which can maximize the core value of Big Top. For those components, we, have think, we are thinking about for in terms of processing, like a Spark, Flink, and Hive. And for storage, we think Hadoop and Kafka is more important, are more important. And for NoSQL components, like uh, we think HBase and Cassandra might be uh, deserve our efforts for the next uh, one or two release. And also, as uh, just mentioned, the Kubernetes has been is getting more and more popular and is running every every aspect of the world. So, uh, cloud and uh, Kubernetes native support is important for for the Apache Big Top. We we would like to develop the add the build and deploy and test. To the big uh, to the big top by using Kubernetes as uh, our uh, underlying computing platforms, 
And uh, also we would like to embrace the cloud providers and then introduce more integrations to these providers to make uh, Big Top more popular and more open to the whole uh, big data software ecosystem. Okay, so here uh, we would like to make a demo uh, to see how easily you can use the Big Top to deploy a big, uh, big data software uh, cluster in just uh, several minutes. Thank you. Uh, I, th I think I think we do we have time? Are we running out of time? Yeah. Okay. So so right now we are getting into one of the ARM uh, system we we used for build, and uh, we just talk about provi uh, provisioning or uh, sandbox solution in Big Top. And right now we're going to show you is a quick demo of. So this is a, this is a, uh, let me finish the typing. Uh, so basically what we do is to run the same box which has Hadoop HDFS packaged. And why we choose to use this for demo? It, because it's, uh, it's the, the fast way to get the stack up and running. So uh, we just uh, provision the stack and right now you can see, you can use the log command to see where it is provisioned. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, so so right now you can see that it's running, it is running Puppy, and it's it's going to provision the 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 stack. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do do you have the web report of the of the? Yeah. Okay. So so. Actually, you can see that uh, it is going to deploy the uh, Hadoop HDFS uh, uh, system in one node, and you can you can see that it is provisioned in 40, 49 seconds. And if you have the uh, web, you, you, web you, ha you have the port of Docker export exposed, you can also visit that web UI on that port. And uh, I think that's it. So that's the that's the demo, and if you have question, uh, please ask. Yeah, please. Uh, what's your policy for updating Java, and who is the provider of your? Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, what's your policy for updating Java, and uh, who is the provider of your Java binaries? Uh, what's the policy of provisioning Java? Updating Java in the entire no. Uh, we oh, the, yeah, we, we just choose open JDK and uh, right now we 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 are, we are running on eight, open JDK eight. So you basically uh, do a distro install. Like. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, we also uh, it also depends on the components. For example, right now uh, Hadoop HBase, most of the biggest components uh, can build on uh, JDK eight. And we'll choose go for that. Okay, so you yeah, just but but it's from, from yeah, it's very complicated because we need to uh, do trade off between components, right? Okay, okay thanks. Yeah. So if there's no question, and uh, I will end my session. Thank you for coming.